O Most Holy Mother, intercede for us so that we may well understand the teachings of your Divine Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the explanations of the Fathers of the Church. O Immaculate Virgin, I offer you this work and ask that you bless those who hear it. And may it be for the greatest honor and glory of God. Amen. Cleanse my heart and my lips, O Almighty God, who didst cleanse with a burning coal the lips of the prophet Isaias, and vouchsafe in thy loving kindness so to purify me that I may be enabled worthily to announce thy holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily and becomingly announce His gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew The Parable of the Talents Jesus told His disciples this parable, It will be as when a man who was going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another, two, to a third, one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them, and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter, so out of fear I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply. You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter? Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then. Take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich, but from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away and throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Comments from the Church Fathers Gloss, St. Thomas Aquinas In the preceding parable the condemnation of those who did not prepare for themselves sufficient oil was demonstrated, whether by oil is meant the brightness of works, the joy of conscience, or almsgiving, which is offered with money. St. John Chrysostom, Homily in Matthew, Homily 78 2. This parable is inferred against those who not only with money, but not with words, or even in any other way, want to be useful to their neighbors, but hide everything. That is why he says, It will be as when a man who was going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. St. Gregory the Great, Homily in Evangelia, 9 1. This man who goes abroad is our Redeemer, who ascended into heaven with that flesh which he had taken. The flesh has its proper place on earth, and is carried as on pilgrimage, when it is placed in heaven by our Redeemer. Origen, in Matthew, 33. According to the nature of his divinity he does not travel, but according to the order of the body he has taken, for he who says to his disciples, And behold, I am with you always, until the end of the age. MT 28 20, is the only begotten of God, who is not circumscribed to the bodily constitution. And in saying this, we do not dissolve Jesus, but we respect the properties of each nature. We can say that the Lord travels with those who live by faith, 
not by sight, 2 Corinthians 5 verses 6-7. And when we are absent from the body with the Lord, then will He also He with us. Observe that the turn of expression is not thus, I am like, or the Son of Man is like, a man traveling into a far country, because he is represented in the parable as traveling, not as the Son of God, but as man. St. Jerome. And when the apostles had been summoned, he delivered to them the doctrine of the gospel, distributing it, giving more to some and less to others, but not according to their generosity or stinginess, but according to the ability and strength of each of those who received it. Thus, as the apostle says, those who could not digest solid food, he fed with milk, 1 Corinthians 3 verse 2. Therefore it follows, to one he gave five talents, to another, two, to a third, one, to each according to his ability. St. John Chrysostom. In the five talents, or in the two, and even in one, we understand that to each one were given various graces. Origen, in Matthew 33. Among those to whom Christ has entrusted the administration of the Word of God, you will find that some have more and others less, and are not, as it were, less intelligent in the matter compared with the better, you will see that others have even less, then you will perceive the differences between those who receive the word of Christ, for the strength of those to whom five talents were given, and another that of those who received two, and another that of those who received one, and the one did not reach the measure of the other, even he who has received a talent has received something not insignificant, for a talent of such a lord is also a great thing. There are, however, three kinds of servants, just as there are three kinds of those who bear fruit, he has received five talents who can lead everything that in the scriptures is sensible to more divine senses, he who has been well instructed in the bodily doctrine has received two, two, in fact, seems to be a carnal number, finally, the father of the family gave a talent to the one who was even less capable. St. Gregory the Great, Homilii in Evangelia, 9, 1. Or, to put it another way, the five talents denote the gifts of the five senses, that is, the science of external things, while the two talents signify intelligence and work, and one talent indicates only the gift of intelligence. So it continues, then he went away. Gloss, St. Thomas Aquinas. Not by changing places, but by leaving them a freedom to do things according to their will. It follows, immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them, and made another five. St. Jerome. Thus having received the bodily senses, he doubled the knowledge of the heavenly, knowing the Creator through creatures, incorporeal things through corporeal things, and eternal things through temporal things. St. Gregory the Great, Homilii in Evangelia, 9, 1. There are also some who though they cannot pierce to things inward and mystical, yet for their measure of view of their heavenly country they teach rightly such things as they can, what they have gathered from things without, and while they keep themselves from wantonness of the flesh, and from ambition of earthly things, and from the delights of the things that are seen, they restrain others also from the same by their admonitions. Origen, in Matthew. 33. Or those who exercised their senses, lived in a healthful way, rising to a higher science, and teaching with care, gain five other talents. For no one easily receives an increase of any other virtue than that which he has, and when he possesses it, he communicates it to others, and no more. St. Hilary of Poitiers, in Matthew 27. Or that servant who received five talents is the believing people who came from the law from which he doubled his merit, fulfilling the work of evangelical faith. It follows, likewise, the one who received two made another two. St. Gregory the Great, Homilii in Evangelia, 9, 1. Again, there are some who by their understanding and their actions preach to others, and thence gain as it were a twofold profit in such merchandise. This their preaching bestowed upon both sexes is thus a talent doubled. Origen, in Matthew, 33. Or, made another two, that is, carnal instruction, and another yet a little higher. St. Hilary of Poitiers, in Matthew, 27. Or that servant to whom two talents have been entrusted is the Gentile people, justified by the faith and confession of the Son and the Father, that is, 
by the confession of our Lord Jesus Christ, God and man by spirit and flesh. These, then, are the two talents entrusted to them. But as the Jewish people had known all the mysteries contained in the five talents, that is, in the law, and had doubled it by faith in the gospel, so the people of the Gentiles merited understanding and works by the increase of the two talents. It follows, but the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. St. Gregory the Great, Homilii in Evangelia, 9, 1. To hide talent in the earth is to entwine the ingenuity received in earthly acts. Origen, in Matthew, 33. Or, in another way, if you see someone who has the virtue of teaching and being useful to souls, and who conceals this virtue, even if he manifests a certain religiosity in his dealings, do not hesitate to say that he received a talent and buried it. St. Hilary of Poitiers, in Matthew, 27. Either this servant who has received a talent and hid it in the earth is the people who persist in the law, who, through envy of the Gentiles who are to be saved, have hidden the talent received in the earth, to hide the talent in the earth is to hide, under the slander of bodily passion the glory of the new preaching. It follows, after a long time the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. This settling of accounts is the examination of the court. Origen, in Matthew. 33. Notice in this passage that it is not the servants who go to the Lord to be judged, but the Lord who comes to them when the time is up. Hence he says, after a long time, that is, after he has sent those who were able to seek the salvation of souls, therefore it is not easy to know which of them is fit for such a work, so that he may quickly come out of this life, as is clearly inferred from the fact that the apostles also have grown old. Among them, Peter was told, when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, John 21 verse 18, and Paul said to Philemon, I, Paul, the old Paul, Philemon 9. St. John Chrysostom, Homily in Matthew, Homily 78, 2. Note that the Lord does not immediately require accounts, that thou mayest know his long suffering, and it seems to me that he says this secretly insinuating his resurrection. St. Jerome. I said, therefore, after a long time because the time is great between the Saviour's ascension and his second advent. St. Gregory the Great, Homilii in Evangelia, 9, 1. The reading of this gospel warns us that those who in this world have received more than others will have to suffer a more severe judgment before the author of the world, because in proportion as the gifts increase, the obligation to render an account increase. And therefore they must be all the humbler by reason of their positions, the more they are obliged to render accounts. Origen, in Matthew, 33. Trust made the one who had received five talents dare to approach the Lord, so it follows, the one who had received five talents came forward bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. St. Gregory the Great, Homilii in Evangelia. 9, 2. The servant, therefore, who has given twice as many talents is praised by the Lord and led to eternal reward. And it is added, his master said to him, Well done. Rabinus Morrow. Well done is an interjection of joy, the Lord showing us therein the joy with which he invites the servant who labors well to eternal bliss, of which the prophet speaks. You make him the pattern of blessings forever, you gladden him with the joy of your face. Psalm 20 verse 7. St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 78, 2. My good and faithful servant, because it refers to the good in relation to the neighbor, and faithful, because he did not appropriate anything that belonged to his Lord. St. Jerome. Since you were faithful in small matters, because all that we have at present, though it may seem great and abundant, is nevertheless little compared with the goods to come. St. Gregory the Great, Homilii in Evangelia, 9, 2. But then the faithful servant will be built over many goods, when, when all the disease of corruption has been overcome, he will glory in eternal joys. Then he will also be perfectly introduced into the joy of his Lord, when, received into the eternal homeland and into the assembly of angels, he will so rejoice inwardly at the reward that he will no longer be grieved with external corruption.
it follows, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Saint Jerome What greater prize can be given to the faithful servant than to be with his Lord and see his joy? Saint John Chrysostom, Homily in Matthew, Homily 78, 3 By this expression he shows all the blessedness. Saint Augustine, De Trinitate, 1, 8 This will be our full joy and there can be no greater joy than to enjoy God and the Trinity, according to whose image we are made. St. Jerome The father of the family praises with the same discourse the two servants, the one who had doubled the five talents into ten, and the one who made four of two, he also receives both with similar joy, not from consideration of the greatness of the gain, but from the exertion of his will. It follows, then the one who had received two talents also came forward. Origen, Homily 33 in Matthew. When he says that the one who had received five talents and the one who had received two has approached, he understands by approximation the transit from this world to the next. And he notes that these are the same words that he addresses to the two, so that it should not be believed that the one who received fewer faculties and used as he suited all those he received had to receive from God a lesser reward than the other who had greater means. The only thing that is sought is for man to use all that he has received from God for the glory of God. St. Gregory the Great, Homilii in Evangelia, 9, 3 The servant who would not work with the talent returned to the Lord with excuses, then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person. St. Jerome Truly, what is written? to offer excuses excusing sins, applies to this servant, adding the crime of pride to those of laziness and negligence. For the one who should simply confess his inertia and beg the father of the family, conversely, slanders him and says that he acted prudently, not exposing himself to losing the money and seeking profits. Origen, Homily 33 in Matthew. It seems to me that this servant was among the believers, not, however, among those who act faithfully, but among those who want to hide themselves and who do everything not to be recognized as Christians. Moreover, those who are like this seem to me to fear God and know that He is like a stern and unforgiving man. And this shows when He says, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter, so out of fear I went off and buried your talent in the ground. We understand that in truth our Lord reaps where He has not sown because the righteous sow in the Spirit, from which he will reap eternal life. He also reaps where he does not sow, and gathers where he does not scatter, because he counts as a sign to him all that has been sown among the poor. St. Jerome By the fact that this servant dares to say, Harvesting where you did not plant, we understand that the Lord also receives the good life of the Gentiles and the philosophers. St. Gregory the Great, Homilii in Evangelia 9, 3. There are many in the church who resemble this servant, people who fear to enter the path of a better life, and yet they are not afraid to be stretched out in the indolence of their bodies. Considering themselves sinners, they shudder for fear to take the paths of holiness, not fearing to remain in their iniquities. St. Hilary of Poitiers, in Matthew, 27. Or by this servant is meant the Jewish people, obsessed with his law and who say, I was afraid of you, so that they remained aloof from the practices of evangelical freedom for fear of the old precepts and said, Here it is back, as if you had stood still in what was commanded by the Lord. He did this, however, knowing that the fruits of righteousness were to be reaped where the law was not sown, and that those who were scattered and who were not of Abraham's stock were to be gathered from among the Gentiles. St. Jerome but with the same thing that he believed he was apologizing, he condemns himself. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant! So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter? He calls him an evil servant because he has slandered the Lord, of laziness, because he did not want to duplicate his talent, and condemns him for both pride and negligence. Says the Lord, If thou hast known that I am hard and cruel, and that I seek in others, and thou hast known that I would diligently demand what is mine, thou shouldest give my money, or my silver, to the bankers, the Greek word Argerian means both money and silver. 
the word of the Lord, the pure word, is searched by fire. Therefore, money and silver are the preaching of the gospel and the divine word, by the expression should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return, is meant either the other doctors whom the apostles formed when they ordained presbyters and bishops in each province, Acts 14 verse 22, or all believers, who can double the money and return it with profit, so that they carry out by works all that they have learned by speech. St. Gregory the Great, Homilii in Evangelia, 9, 4. Just as there is a danger that doctors may conceal the talent of the Lord, so the hearers may incur the same fault, for what they have heard is demanded of them with profit, so that they must strive to understand what they have not heard from what they have heard. Origen, Homily 33 in Matthew. The Lord did not confess, however, that he was as hard as that servant thought, but he agreed with his other words. It is, however, really those who abuse God's mercy to be negligent, not to convert. St. Gregory the Great, Homilii in Evangelia, 9, 4. Let us listen, then, to the sentence with which the Lord will strike the lazy servant, now then. Take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. Origen, Homily 33 in Matthew. The Lord can, surely, by virtue of his divine power, take away the sufficiency of the sluggard who abuses it, and give it to him who has multiplied it. St. Gregory the Great, Homilii in Evangelia, 9, 4. It would seem to make more sense if he gave it to the one who had received two, not to the one who had received five. He should, therefore, give to the one who had less, but as by five talents he designates external knowledge, and by the two talents understanding and work, he had more who had two than he who had received five. For if it is true that by the five talents he merited the administration of external things, yet he was empty of the knowledge of eternal things. The only talent, which, as we have said, means understanding, should be given to him who has well managed the external things he has received, and this is what we daily see in the Holy Church, namely, that those who faithfully administer external things enjoy the knowledge of internal things. St. Jerome or the talent is given to the one who had won another ten, so that we may understand that, while the joy of the Lord is equal at the work of both, namely, the one who doubled the five and the one who doubled the two, a greater reward is due to the one who worked the most with the Lord's money. St. Gregory the Great, Homilii in Evangelia, 9, 6. Then he also introduces a general sentence, by which he says, For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich but from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Therefore he who has charity also receives other gifts, but those who do not have it will lose even the gifts they seem to have received. St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 78, 3. He who has the gift of speech and doctrine to serve loses grace if he does not use them, but he who strives attracts greater gifts. St. Jerome there are many who, though they are naturally wise and have the penetration of intelligence, if they have been negligent and by indolence corrupted the natural gift, being compared with those a little less intelligent who, by industry and work, have compensated for what they had little, will lose the natural gift and see the prize promised to them transferred to others. All this can also be understood in this way, he who has faith and goodwill in the Lord, even if, as a man, has some deficiency in the work, will be rewarded by the good judge. He, however, who has no faith will lose even the other virtues which he seemed to possess naturally. And the Lord says elegantly, But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Whatever is done without faith in Christ is not to be imputed to the one who has misused it, but to him who has bestowed the natural gift even upon the wicked servant. St. Gregory the Great, Homilii in Evangelia, 9, 6 or he who has no charity also loses what he seemed to have gained. St. Hilary of Poitiers, in Matthew, 27. Those who practice the gospel will also be granted the honor of the law, but from him who has not faith in Christ, even that honor which he seemed to have, because of the law, will be taken away. St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 78, 3. The wicked servant is not only punished with injury, 
but also with the intolerable penalty and the penalty of reprehensible announcement. Therefore it follows, and throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Origen, Homily 33 in Matthew. That is, where there is no light, perhaps not even corporeal light, nor is there any vision of God, but as unworthy of the vision of God, those who have sinned in such a way are condemned to what are called outer darkness. We read that someone before us explained what the abyss of darkness would be, which is outside the world, so that the unworthy of the whole world are cast there, where there is darkness that no one illuminates. St. Gregory the Great, Homilii in Evangelia, 9, 6. And thus he incurs the penalty of outer darkness who, through his spontaneous fault, falls into the inner ones. St. Jerome. What weeping and gnashing of teeth are, we have already said above. St. John Chrysostom, Homilii in Matthew, Homily 78, 3. He realizes, however, that not only is the one who steals from the other and works badly punished with the most atrocious penalty, but also the one who does not do good. St. Gregory the Great, Homilii in Evangelia, 9, 6. He who has the intelligence, therefore, must take care not to be silent, he who has an abundance of goods, let him not neglect mercy, he who has the art of commanding, let him share it with his neighbor, whoever has occasion to speak, let him intercede among the rich on behalf of the poor. Whatever we have received, however small, will therefore be examined under the name of talent. Origen, Homily 33 in Matthew. If you are displeased to hear that we will be judged because we do not teach others, remember what the Apostle said, Woe is me if I do not preach the Gospel. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 16. We have reached the end of another day of comments on the Gospel that the Holy Church proposes for us to meditate on today, using the Catina Aurea. Thanks so much for following along. I ask that, if possible, subscribe to the channel, comment, like and share. May Our Lady reward you for this act of charity. And see you tomorrow, with God's graces. Please.